Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So recently I decided to continue working on this third person game. So in the first video we've created a third person controller. But we didn't have some cool features like uh, some kind of special attacks. In this video we're gonna add the archery system. So we'll be able to use the bow and shoot the arrows. I'm using the right mouse button to aim. Then we can shoot using the left mouse button. Also we're gonna add few enemies. I'm gonna show you how to use the animator controller to create this kind of behavior. Now the enemy is chasing. We can hit it as well. So before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell. I appreciate that. Also don't forget to uh, watch the first video because we're going to continue working on the game and let's jump right into it so here's what we left off from the previous video we've downloaded starter assets from the asset store and it's free then we've changed the character to this one so this project comes with a simple third person controller. I can move using the AWSD keys. Also we can look around with the mouse. But we can't use the bow. We can't aim using the right mouse button. So it's very basic. And that's what we are going to do in this video. We're going to add the bow attack. And to do that we need to understand how this project is made. Basically we have the player armature. So this is the main character and it has an animator, a character controller to control the character. Then we have two scripts. This one is the third person controller, which manages the player movement, jumping and so on. We have also few parameters like the speed of the player that we can change. Then we have a second important script, which is the starter assets inputs. So they created a separate script to handle the inputs. We can check if we have pressed a key under the script. And this project is using the new input system. As you can see here we have a starter assets. If you double click on it, you see this window. And this is the new way to use the new input system. And I've created another video to explain how to use the new input system. Make sure to check it out. I'm gonna add a link to it under the video description. Here we have the action map, then the actions like move, jump, sprint and so on. And on the right side we have the properties window to change some properties. For example to set up a key we can use this window. We are using the spacebar button to jump. As you can see we have space. You could also change it from here. Anyway, we're gonna add another action to aim using this plus icon. I'm gonna call it aiming. Then we can set a binding, which is the trigger for the action. So in order to aim, we're gonna use the right mouse button. To set that, we need to select this no binding. Then from the properties window, under the path field, we can search for the right mouse button. Or you could listen to the key. Now whenever we click on the right mouse button, the aiming action triggers but first we need to change the action type I'm gonna change it to pass through or value so both are similar and normally we set the action type to button whenever we have a button like the space bar we only need to hit it once to jump but for the aiming we're gonna hold the right mouse button that's why we need to change the action type to pass through anyway let's close this window and make sure to save then we can go under the starter assets input script which is this one that is attached under the player armature so let's open up this script and basically it contains few variables that are used inside the third person controller script to check whether the player is jumping or sprinting also we have the move vector now we're gonna add another variable 
that we're going to use later on inside the third person controller script to check if we are aiming or not using public boolean and let's call it is aiming then if you go down here you will see that we have few functions like on move on look on sprint and these are called each time we hit a key for example the on jump method is called whenever we hit the spacebar button we can create another one and we need to call it on aiming using public void make sure to call it on then the input action which is aiming this function takes an input value let's call it value as well then we can simply change the boolean is aiming using is aiming equals value dot is pressed so this is going to be true each time we hold the right mouse button and it's going to be false each time we release it now we can use this is aiming variable which we have created on top so that we can start aiming and if you are asking why these functions are called each time an input action is performed and that's because we have another component that is attached to the player armature and it is called the player input which basically takes the starter assets input action that contains all of the input actions like the aiming input action that we have created then it calls the functions on move on sprint and on aiming so this is going to search for the functions that are under a script that is attached to this player armature which is our starter assets inputs script that's why all of these methods are called each time the action is performed by pressing a key like uh, holding the right mouse button anyway now we can open up the player controller script which is called third person controller we can double click on it to modify it let's go under the update function here we have some functions like jump and gravity move to move the player we're going to create another one to start aiming i'm going to call it aim and shoot or aim shoot so we haven't created this function yet we can put it down here using private void and let's write the name which is aim shoot you could create two separate functions one to aim and another one to shoot but I'm gonna put them together then under this function we're gonna check if we are aiming using the variable is aiming and to access it we have another object under this script and the type is tatter assets input which is the name of the script that we have changed and the variable is called underscore input we can check if we are aiming using if underscore input dot is aiming in such case we're going to play some kind of uh, aim animation but first of all i want to add some other conditions so we don't want to aim while we are jumping that's why i'm going to add and so if we are aiming and at the same time we are on the ground using a grounded variable so this is created under this script and it is set under the grounded check function but you don't need to understand the logic behind it this boolean is going to be true if we are on the ground also let's check if we are not sprinting using not then under the input object we can check if we are sprinting using the sprint variable the same thing it is a boolean that is created under this script in such case we're gonna play the aim animation otherwise we're gonna stop the animation so we don't have the animations that we need that's why we can go to mixamo.com then search for Erika and it is this character 
So we're gonna play this one once we start aiming. Then we have this aim idle animation, which we're gonna play while we are holding the right mouse button. Then we have two options. We can cancel the uh, shoot action or we can throw the arrow and the animation that you need is called standing aim recoil. So each time we throw an arrow, we're gonna play this one. Otherwise, we're gonna go to the idle state. Also, I'm gonna use another walk animation. So if we are walking and holding the right mouse button, we're gonna play this animation. Check in place. Let's start by downloading the first one using the download button. Make sure that the format is set to FPX for Unity and the skin without skin. Then let's hit download. Let's put it under the desktop. And the same thing for the other animations. And let's go back to the desktop to import the animations. I'm going to put them under a folder. Let's select all of them. Then drag it under the folder animations. And before we start using these animations, let's select all of them. Then under rig, make sure to select the animation type, which is a humanoid. Then hit apply. Also, we need to fix the orientation of these animations. Basically, if you select one of these and under the animation tab, you see that some of these are not set to original. We need to make sure that all of them has the original option, like the animations of the first character. As you can see, if you select any one of these animations, we have original. And you could see the rotation of the animation from here. Let's set it to original. Then apply. Now we can switch to the aim animation each time we start aiming. And to do that, we need to open up the animator controller. So this player armature has an animator. Let's select the controller field. And it is this one. Let's double click on it. Here we have the idle, walk, run, jump, and so on. We're gonna drag these animations under the animator controller so that we can switch between them. And first I'm gonna use the standing draw arrow. So let's drag it. Each time we start aiming, we're gonna play this animation so we can make transition from this state so whenever the player is idle, walking, or running, we can aim using the right mouse button. And we can set a condition. So under the parameters tab, we can add another condition. And let's use a boolean. I'm going to call it is aiming. Or let's call it aiming. Then we can set the condition. So whenever the aiming parameter is true, our player will transition from his idle walk or run state to the standing draw arrow state. But before that, make sure to select the transition and uncheck has exit time so that we can directly switch to the aim animation each time we set the aiming boolean to true. Now let's go back to the script and to play the animation, we can access the parameter using underscore animator dot set boolean the name is aiming and we're going to change it to the is aiming parameter using underscore input dot is aiming then to stop it we're going to set the aiming parameter to false using false we're going to add this condition later on make sure to save all of these scripts 
and let's hit play and there you go now we can start aiming but we need to go back to the idle state but before that we're gonna play the aim idle animation and I'm gonna use this one that is called standing aim idle then we can make transition from this state to the standing aim idle state then let's make another transition from the aim idle state to the idle walk run blend state so this is actually a blend tree which is basically the easiest way to blend between these three animations idle walk and run so if you double click on it you see that we have this blend tree and it is controlled using a speed parameter so let's hit play if we change the speed the player will transition smoothly between the state now he starts running we're gonna do the same thing whenever we are aiming we're gonna play the idle aim and the walk aim animation using this kind of blend tree this speed parameter is changed under the script you don't need to implement that anyway let's go back to the base layer and let's select a condition which is is aiming or aiming false each time we set this boolean to false our player will transition back to the idle or the walk run states and let's hit play again and yeah but we have a little bit of delay to fix that make sure to uncheck has exit time but I think that the animations are a little bit weird so if I hit the right mouse button I think we need to change some settings so let's select these new animations and I think I'm going to change the avatar so let's select copy from other avatar and I'm gonna use the Erika avatar which you could find under the player armature so if you select player armature we have this kind of avatar let's use it for our animations select all of them then let's select copy from other avatar and drag this one hit apply and let's try it again and there you go but when we start walking and hit the right mouse button you see that the player is still idle we can transition between idle and walk of course of the aim animation using a blend tree and to do that we can right click create state and let's select from a new blend tree I'm gonna change the name to aim idle aim walk then we can double click on it and let's add the two motions which are the two animations using this plus icon add motion field and we're gonna add two the first one is the aim idle animation which is this animation so we're gonna select the blend tree and drag the first motion then the second which is called standing aim walk select the blend tree and drag the second animation now the animation will change depending on the speed value but we need to change this a bit by changing the threshold I'm gonna use the same one so the player will transition from idle to walk when the speed value is between 1 and 2 and if it's between 0 and 1 it's gonna be idle so let's use the same thresholds and the transition is smooth now but first of all we need to use this state 
instead of the standing A1, I'm gonna get rid of it. Let's make transition from the standing draw arrow to the aim idle aim walk and you don't need to set a parameter our player will transition directly from this state to the aim state once it gets finished then we can go back to the idle walk or run each time we change the boolean aiming to false make sure to uncheck has exit time and let's try it again now we can aim while we are idling also we can walk and aim at the same time we just need to change the animation to loop time let's select it then under animation then apply and let's hit play again and there you go now we can aim using the right mouse button but we can shoot so I think I'm gonna divide this uh, video to two parts because it's a little bit long in the next video we're gonna start shooting using the left mouse button so I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any question or comment make sure to write it under the comment section down below also don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and hit the bell icon I appreciate that and I will see you in the next one.